and NXT star receives major praise and could be main roster bound. An injury scare forces changes to last night's NXT. This AEW star is now a free agent and doesn't rule out heading to WWE. And there's an injury update on AEW's Ortiz. Hello and welcome to the solo wednesday news myself andrew Pollard here at what culture wrestling i hope you're well i hope you're good first and foremost apologies for the raspy raspy voice some of us are a little under the weather at the moment uh, and if you're expecting the usual crew the usual guys i'm afraid i've got some bad news because they are in transit right now on their way to philadelphia so you got me today mr velocity uh, right let's get to the first news story and roxanne perez is receiving plentiful praise backstage for her work in nxt now, this comes from Corey Brandon over at Fightful, um, who, yes, uh, says that Roxanne has been getting praise in NXT, but also has got praise for her few appearances uh, that she's made on the main roster over the last couple of years. It's viewed as only a matter of time before Roxanne is called up to Raw or SmackDown, though some in NXT are pushing for Roxanne to beat Lyra Valkyria for the NXT Women's Championship at Stand and Deliver this weekend. Uh, officials are blown away by Roxanne's recent heel work, and some wanted to stay in NXT to, I guess essentially hone that character more. Um, and now, for some people as well who'd speculated that the only reason that Roxanne Perez turned heel was because Cora Jade got injured, uh, and that obviously that was the ACL injury that's keeping her out on the shelf for uh, for a good old while now. This will be for Cora, unfortunately. But that was not the case. Uh, it wasn't the case of, right, we've lost this top heel, so we're going to turn Roxy into a heel. That wasn't the case, and there were actually tentative plans for Roxanne and Cora Jade to reunite as a heel duo somewhere down the line. So as well as all this other praise that she's getting, Roxanne, only 22 years of age, is described as professional beyond her years, and the sky is the limit. So for me, I'm looking at Saturday as a, as in Saturday and Stand and Deliver as, I guess, an indicator on what is in the future for Roxanne Perez, because if she beats Lyra Valkyria and becomes the NXT Women's Champion again, then obviously you'd imagine she'd be staying with NXT for the foreseeable future. If she loses to Lyra Valkyria, who knows? Maybe we're looking at a post-WrestleMania call-up for Roxanne Perez, who's just... So, so, so talented. Um, and it is, really is the sky's the limit. I think she's only 22 is just absolutely nuts. Now, we've got an update here on Joe Gacy. If you uh, watched NXT last night, there was a, a scary situation where Joe Gacy had a match with Oba Femi. Uh, Joe Gacy gets slammed to the mat. The referee stops the match. There's a little bit of confusion. You can see Oba Femi's a little bit confused. The ref stops the match. The X sign goes up. Officials checked on Joe Gacy. Uh, and now, again, this is from Fightful. Joe Gacy did have a legitimate injury scare last night, but he is said to be doing fine. So that's that's a relief to know. This wasn't planned. It wasn't a planned spot. There were fears that Joe Gacy had suffered a concussion, but he was able to make his way to the back under his own power. Now, this caused a couple of changes to the originally scheduled programming of NXT. Firstly, the match between Joe Gacy and Obafemi was to be followed by Sean Spears and Josh Briggs coming out to have a, a face-off of Obafemi. Of course, those three are doing battle at Stand and Deliver for the North American title at the weekend. Um, but that segment in the end was filmed backstage, basically called on the fly and an audible was done to, to do that in the backstage setting. Um, secondly, the graphics for the Sean Spears versus Joe Gacy match at Stand and Deliver were initially put on hold due to the uncertainty over Joe Gacy's status. But of course, if you saw NXT, that match was later confirmed for Stand and Deliver after Gacy basically told Ava, the GM of NXT, my voice sounds really weird. I'm apologizing again for this. But he told Ava that he was fine. She confirmed the match. So yes, there was a very legit scare, but thankfully Joe Gacy is A-OK. -okay. Um, moving over to AEW, well, I guess kind of AEW, but also the free agency market. Matt Hardy, uh, there's an excellent interview he did uh, yesterday. I think it was posted with Chris Van Vliet. Chris always does such amazing work. His interviews are just, it's for someone like me who appreciates long form interviews, Great. So many topics covered here. And one topic that was covered, of course, is the contract status of Matt Hardy. This follows on from reports uh, throughout the last month or two that Matt's deal with AEW is due to expire in March. Uh, that is the case. He is now a free agent. And he didn't rule out a WWE return when he was asked about what lies in his future. Now, the full quotes from that are over at whatcoach.com. You can go and check those out. But the main takeaway on this particular topic was that legacy is what's most important to Matt Hardy right now. Uh, and that is the legacy of both he and Jeff Hardy, the Hardy boys. Um, now, Matt thinks he's got, maybe if he's capable of, he thinks he's got uh, hopefully another two years in him in terms of in-ring career. And he wants to be used during that time in a way where he can help younger talent get over. Um, essentially, to do that, the Hardys actually have to win some matches and achieve some things so that when someone beats them, it means something. Because, I mean, if you're 
that veteran team that's that's always losing and always losing and always losing what does it matter when somebody else beats you whereas if you're say the tag team champions you you it's you work in smart matches that still accentuate your positives doing i guess a greatest hits routine um and you've gone a lot of runners with, with the tag belts uh, and then you lose eventually to somebody in a heated program that means more because they've beaten this top team the legendary hardy boys not just the hardy boys that lose all the time and they run aew television um, so yeah, it's, it's a really, really fun chat. He doesn't rule out WWE, doesn't rule out anything, basically. Uh, he does have a contract offer from AEW to uh, sign a new deal, but he's uh, match just having fun, really, uh, weighing up his options. And because uh, realistically, he's just turned 50 years of age. Looks absolutely brilliant. Uh, he does note in this interview that he's down to 204 pounds with the aim being to get down to 200 pounds. Also notice, he, he may mention as well of how good condition Jeff is in these days. He gets up at 5 a.m. and does an hour cardio. Uh, and also poked fun at how rough some of Jeff Swans on bombs are these days because, yeah, man, those those poor guys taking that move. There's no there's no give. They're getting that full weight of Jeff Hardy on him. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a really interesting listen. I would go. I'd recommend it. Go and give it a, a whirl. Um, but yes, Matt Hardy has AEW interest, well, an offer, but isn't ruling out anything. It's just a case of, I mean. Realistically, this is probably going to be the last contract of Matt Hardy's in-ring career. 50 years of age, a lot of wear and tear on that body, obviously. Um, put himself through the ringer so many times in big matches on, on, on the biggest stage. So uh, I'm, I'm intrigued to see where this could go. Now, if you think of the Matt Hardy to WWE, the Hardy Boys back to WWE, there is the caveat that Jeff Hardy is still contracted to AEW because he's had uh, time tagged on because of injuries and absences. So if Matt did rock up in... That's something really high. Again, sorry for this. And sorry to add to Ben Roy, he wants to put it with my voice today. Um, but yes, yeah, so even if Matt did turn up, say, at WrestleMania, or the Raw after WrestleMania, or the SmackDown after WrestleMania, he would be alone, or at least without Jeff anyway for now. And in terms of AEW, Ortiz revealed over the weekend that he's been out of action with a torn pectoral muscle. Um, now, that would be the same injury that Cody Rhodes suffered ahead of, uh, was it Hell in a Cell 2022, when Cody had the giant bruise and then took a whole bunch of time off to, to recover from that. Um, uh, he revealed this this injury happened when he was doing a clothesline this he being ortiz just a standard clothesline pulled or well, tore his pec um pw insider mike johnson notes that ortiz actually had successful surgery yesterday um the former pride and powerful man had previously stated that he has uh, he put it as a, a four month recovery and then he'll return more jacked and with a mullet and a moustache because mullets and a moustache is always a great look. I would happily, uh, I, I'd love to see that. Um, Dave Meltzer on, uh, on Wrestle Observer Radio yesterday speculated that Ortiz could be out for up to eight, nine months or more. So it's a, it's a long road to recovery for Ortiz, but all the best wishes for myself and all of us here at What Culture Wrestling uh, to him on a, a full and unhealthy recovery. Now, let's get to a couple of questions to wrap things up so I can go and rest my voice. Uh, right, where are we? Rick's got in touch. Uh, Mother and Andrew, good to have you on a weekday. Thanks for having me, Rick. Do you agree that the Andre the Giant Battle Royal should be moved to WrestleMania, at least the kickoff show? Surely the fans and wrestlers will benefit from this. Have a great day, pal. You have a great day too, Rick. And again, my voice went really high pitched there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I do. I agree with you that I think the Andre the Giant Battle Royal should be on WrestleMania on the, I'd go with the, the pre-show because I'm sure, I believe it's it's two hours of pre-show per day. And it's like, come on, man. I know obviously to, during those two hours, you're not going to have the full uh, stadium. You're going to have people coming in, getting their seats. But I just think for, if I'm the wrestlers, yes, okay, technically it's part of WrestleMania weekend, but having it on the, on the SmackDown on the Friday. But you just, you'd want to be in the, the big stadium with the WrestleMania crowd, the WrestleMania signage, the logos, the, the the pomp and circumstance, rather than just being on a SmackDown, which will be, I'm sure it's going to be a, a great, um, rabid SmackDown. The crowd's going to be crazy for it, but it's not WrestleMania, is it? Let's face it. So yeah, for me, I think you, you can make room for that. It's a, what, 20 minutes on a pre-show, absolutely fine. If you wanted to do as well, you could do a women's battle royal uh, on the other night, but Clearly, that is not the uh, approach WWE is taking. Uh, David Dalgleish has got a touch. Hey, David, a Sunday news legend on a Wednesday. Very kind of you. What a time to be alive. With it looking like Cody and Drew are walking out of Mania as champs, where does this leave Damian Priest? I know he has some time left to cash in, but on who? It was a little like he's destined for the failed cash-in list. See, I... I have, I, I don't know. I have a feeling, or what I'd like to see is Damian Priest cash in at WrestleMania on Drew McIntyre. So, and there's there's so many ways you could do that to work. So obviously Drew McIntyre and Damien Priest have had beef before. Part of Drew's story, right, the story, again with the story, but Drew's story is that his big moment, his big WrestleMania moments weren't, they, well, the, the first one happened in an empty arena. The second one, he came up short against Bobby Lashley. So Drew's not had that massive moment in front of fans, winning a title 
And that's the driving factor behind this Drew McIntyre character, this amazing Drew McIntyre character we have right now. So I just think it adds a nice bit of depth. If he finally gets the moment, finally beats Seth Rollins for that World Heavyweight title, and then Damien Priest cashes in, and that moment's gone again, and that gives McIntyre even more fuel, more anger. Also, a certain Second City Saint on commentary, if he's healthy enough, he 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 if he's healthy enough, hey man, if Punk can pull off a GTS, I think a, a post-match GTS, Priest comes out, cashes in, but that's a very big if, because obviously we've all seen the um, the strapping on Punk's arm right now. But yeah, I, I think Priest is, is, is fine. I don't think he'll have a failed cash-in, and that's just how I would do it myself. Reese Dixon's got into Archie Reese. Uh, with it sound like the tag titles are getting split? Mania, who do you see getting the titles? I think Awesome Truth will probably get a run with one of them. I agree, I'd have Awesome Truth win the, I guess, the Raw tag titles. And for me, I'm going with DIY. I'd like to see DIY get a big moment at WrestleMania in a car crash, chaotic match that that is going to be. Um, so I'd, I'd go with DIY and I'd go with R-Truth and, uh, and The Miz. As for, I guess, which brand you do it, because obviously one of those belts will then be exclusive to SmackDown. Um, I think, I don't know, I think R-Truth on SmackDown could be fun. So I'd maybe have R-Truth and The Miz win the SmackDown ones and then DIY stay on Raw. One last question that we can quickly get to. Tom talks rubbish. Hey, Tom. Uh, always good to hear from you. Just got the network back from Mania. Can you recommend five of your favorite WrestleMania matches to get me in the mood? Oh, wow. Let's, I'm going to try not to make it all Bret Hart. But for me, my favorite match of all time is Bret Hart versus Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 8. So that has to be on there. I'd say... You know, the best match for me in WrestleMania history is Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13. So that has to be on there. And the importance of that match, what it did for the Steve Austin character. Bret Hart versus Owen Hart is another massive favorite um, at WrestleMania 10, the greatest opener in WrestleMania history. I try not to make it all about Bret Hart, but um, Randy Savage versus Steve McWarrior at WrestleMania 7, that's on there. I mean, Savage versus Hogan at 5, I'm, I'm not a big Hulk Hogan fan, but the story they did there was just phenomenal the, the story of it all the the longer story that went back basically 18 months or more uh, one of the greatest stories in company history you've got rock and austin at 17 where well, that deserves a mention just purely for the limp biscuit my way by the video package which is just goosebumps man think of that i mentioned matt hardy before you've got the wars that the hardys dudley's edge and christian had um kurt angle versus Eddie guerrero at 20 is a massive favorite of mine you've got daniel bryan at wrestlemania 30 is big moment kofi versus bryan at wrestlemania 35 sasha and bianca at 37 there's more than five suggestions there tom so you knock yourself out my pal um yes let me know how you get on with those matches i'm very keen to think what you make of them but i have been andrew pallard here on the solo wednesday news of what culture wrestling i hope you have a good day there'll be a video floating around here if you to click on go check it out it's amazing i'm sure and i will catch you tomorrow